Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Visaka Industries Q3 FI21 earnings conference call hosted by ICICI Securities. As a reminder, all participants' lines will be in listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star than zero on your touchdown phone. Please note this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Jigar Shah from ICICI Securities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Vikram. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, it is a pleasure to welcome you all on behalf of ICICI Securities to Visaka Industries Q3 FI21 earnings conference call. We have with, with us today on the call Mr. Vamsi Krishna, Joint Managing Director of Visaka Industries, and Mr. S. Shafiullah, CFO of Visaka Industries. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, uh, Mr. Jigar. So, a uh, very good morning uh, to everybody on the call. Um, I'd just like to start off with uh, sharing that uh, we are very happy uh, to share the stellar performance for the quarter, uh, which is even sequentially better in this uh, traditionally weak quarter normally. The building product segment, both asbestos roofing and the boats division, have uh, significantly contributed well to the top line as well as the bottom and supported by improved margins by the yarn business. We expect the trend to continue for the fourth quarter and also for FI22. Uh, this is all backed up, uh, of course, by the rural growth. I think we've seen a great uh, change from the lockdown days uh, in the last couple of months where the rural growth has really picked up and supported as well. Uh, this coupled by the cost reduction efforts which the company has taken over the last year or so has helped us prepare process for this um, turn of this year. Uh, the potential urban growth, of course, will be an additional driver for the future, uh, especially for the VNext and the yarn businesses. Um, concentrating and talking about VNext, of course, uh, I think it's been a long journey for us as a company in terms of uh, trying to get the VNEX division uh, spread to large. Uh, and uh, we are happy to share that the performance has been very good. Uh, the exports also have picked up and supported very well. And the civil works have for the new fourth unit of the VNEX plant at uh, Udmal Pate have started uh, near Coimbatore, uh, which is expected to commence production by October this year. Um, we have also announced a panel unit uh, in the same location. So V boards and V panels uh, almost are going hand in hand today. Uh, v panels is more like a um, forward integrated product that uh, goes with V next. So seeing the good demand in the boards and panels business, it was decided to add the panels uh, in the fourth plant as well. Uh, Atom, of course, is a futuristic product where we are seeing uh, good potential for growth over a period of time in the future. Uh, the Atom division has picked up momentum in segments where uh, fiber cement board is used. Uh, we are also exploring uh, exports for this product in terms of uh, Nepal, Sri Lanka, South Africa, and uh, the Middle East. We are happy to share that we've uh, deployed our first Atom installation in um, Sharjah uh, with uh, uh, tie up with the uh, Chief Economic uh, Development Officer, he was uh, very enthusiastic about the product and we did a first installment uh, with his direction. Uh, coming to the financial performance, the total revenue grew by 16% to 282 crores for the quarter compared to 242 of the previous year, same quarter. And we grew by 23% uh, sequentially compared to uh, the September quarter. 2020. Uh, building products volume is up, up, is up by 13% uh, compared to the previous year, same quarter, and 21% uh, compared to the September 2014. Uh, the capacity utilization of uh, the building product businesses overall is uh, gone up to almost 90% now in terms of uh, VNEX really giving a good support in terms of a push. And the spinning capacity utilization has gone back up to 85% now in the current quarter of December 2020. Um, the EBITDA margins for the company for the year, uh, for the quarter, is 
compared to nine of the previous year same quarter. And for the nine months, the EBITDA also has grown by uh, to 18% from 11%. And the margins in VNext uh, products has, I think, uh, been good. It's a good sign. Uh, it has maintained at 15% uh, consistently for over two quarters. The profit before tax this quarter rose by about uh, 265%, uh, to 31 crores. Uh, from eight crores of the previous year same quarter. Uh, the PAT, of course, uh, stands at 23 crores uh, compared to six crores of previous year same quarter. Uh, this performance is a result of better price realizations. I think this trend has been uh, going uh, since the last couple of months since the market has opened post-COVID uh, lockdown. And uh, there has been a very good demand and increase in volumes um, overall, if you see uh, rural being the main push for us, um, which really has uh, a positive impact on the overall numbers that you see, and also overall improvement in the operations, um, which we've been mentioning, uh, I think, even the last time we had mentioned, that uh, as a company, we've uh, concentrated quite effectively in uh, taking operations, uh, most operations online. We are more efficient and more effective in terms of um, uh, cost management. So this is a combined effort that you see in terms of the numbers. Um, our working capital cycle has come down to 81 days uh, for the nine months, ended uh, 31st December 2020, from almost uh, 130 days compared to the previous year. Uh, this is obviously due to the improvement in the collection from customers and the lower inventory period um, due to the sudden uplift in demand, uh, also uh, the situation is uh, uh, got into the picture. Uh, the interest cost has come down from uh, 4 crores in December 19 quarter to 2 crores in December 20 quarter. Uh, the net debt has come down by 171 crores from 242 crores as on uh, uh, this December 2020. Um, and uh, even if there is a like, uh, even if there is going to be some amount of uh, working capital requirement in terms of the capex for the new plant, uh, the company is expected to become a net debt free by the end of 2022. So this is a tough plan or, or um, sketch uh, of what has transpired. And uh, we'll be happy to take on questions in terms of uh, uh, these uh, in, in the conversation. In conclusion, uh, I'd like to share that um, the rural Demand has been a big boost for us, and, uh, and also with the union budget announcing significant measures for rural growth, uh, I think uh, this will be a, a good year to look forward for the businesses that we are in. Um, with the capital expenditure that the government is talking about, it will definitely add as a boost to the plans that we've made. Uh, the demand for building products and the yarn will continue to grow. We expect double-digit growth uh, for both uh, the cement proofing business as well as the Phoenix growth business, <clears throat> with spinning, maintaining, and returning to normalcy in Q4. Um, while we expect to maintain the current margin in asbestos business, the Phoenix is expected to deliver 15% plus about 18% margin in the next quarters to come, and likely to go up in the coming year. Uh, spinning is likely to deliver 12 to 15 percent uh, margin, and then in the coming year is what in the coming quarter and year is what we are looking at. Uh, in conclusion, we are on a very strong wicket on all parameters, along with the future outlook for the coming years. Uh, I'd like to uh, share here that uh, even the export market has seen a good uplift uh, in demand uh, for the VNEX boats and uh, the non asbestos uh, roofing sheets. We are happy to share that we started exporting um, non-asbestos roofing sheets as well, uh, which opens up a new category in terms of the product mix that we have. Uh, the boards, of course, has a good lift in terms of premium products. Uh, in fact, we are one of the only ones to have a premium uh, board of A category in terms of the product draw mix that we have in the country. Um, so that gives, them a, gives us an advantage in terms of uh, uh, product uh, push. 
uh, apart from the export uh, business that we're looking at. In textiles, I'm very happy to share that uh, in spite of the various um, you know, hurdles the textile industry has gone through, we have taken it up as an opportunity to expand on um, new businesses. So in the, in, the, in the time of lockdown, we've developed the multiple shades of uh, um, you know, new fibers and technical textiles which uh, are helping us in our product mix today. We are active in selling um, dyed fibers. We've bought into flame retardant uh, fibers. And uh, the range of sustainable yarns is almost touching about 10 to 15% of our sales monthly, uh, which uh, is basically the recycled PET bottles that we keep talking about. Now that the number has gone up to 135 million plastic bottles that we are recycling, so all in all, I think uh, all the industries are looking in a positive direction, and um, solar being uh, the, the new entry into the uh, market, we have seen positive trends, but we'll have to wait and see how uh, certain uh, rules and regulations are being talked about uh, from the government front. Um, apart from that, the urban Swachh Bharat, which the government has launched, uh, has proposed in the budget of about uh, 1.4 lakh crores uh, over the next five years, the such bar scheme uh, that has been proposed. Uh, as a company and uh, business, uh, we see a good uh, opportunity to take part in uh, most of the upcoming new construction in a sustainable way. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, I'll be very happy to answer uh, any questions that you may be having. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. We will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. To ask a question, please press star one now. We have a first question from the line of Siddharth Raj Purohit from JHP Securities. Please go ahead. Good morning, sir, and thank you for the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Sir, the uh, recent numbers of uh, Hero Motors, uh, Hero Motor Corp has uh, been studied as that there is a slowdown in the rural economy. Do you see that, uh, sir? What is your comment, sir? No, uh, I think uh, uh, there's always a difference in uh, uh, the products that we are looking at. I think uh, this point is, uh, I think, raised uh, earlier also in uh, previous years of performance. I think automobile segment uh, compared to the building segment, there is a slight difference in uh, terms of the market pull and demand. We are not seeing any such uh, signs. We are actually seeing a very robust uh, uh, outlay in the rural segment. Great, sir. And sir, uh, second is for VNEX, sir. Uh, sir, uh, the real estate uh, economy, uh, the industry is expected to now uh, perform well and enter into a new cycle, sir. How do you, uh, how is, how are you seeing it, sir? Is there a lot of consolidation, or there are uh, more players uh, available for you to sell, sir? And uh, yeah. is the market big, or only few players are there for you? Sir? Yeah, so uh, I'll, I'll answer this in two bits. I think, first of all, I think the whole concept of the VNext uh, uh, constructions or VNext solutions that we call in terms of using the product for its utility, I think finally people are seeing the actual value of it in terms of literally saying that we are water resistant, we are fire resistant, and we are termite resistant, and also that we are eco friendly. I think that awareness and demand has really caught up uh, post-COVID. I think people are more conscious in the materials that they are using. That is helping us in terms of the overall outplay. In, in fact, uh, in, in the December quarter, uh, in, in a single month, we've sold almost about 10 million square feet of boards. So that's the kind of uh, outplay we are looking at in terms of the product pool. And in terms of uh, market consolidation, I have not seen major consolidation happen till yet. Uh, uh, the output that we are having is from the re retail uh, outlets that we have built. We have a very strong base of almost 2,000 plus uh, outlets of 
VNEX alone, concentrating on VNEX alone. And then, of course, we have a rural network from the parent company, which we have almost about 7,500 outlets. So all in all, we're looking at about 10,000 outlets uh, that can potentially give us a good outlet. We're not uh, really um, looking at uh, concentrating or uh, um, getting less uh, benefit through consolidation of uh, other markets or other real estate players. I think the overall spread will be quite uniform and positive. Okay, sir. Okay. Sir, uh, sir, is our product, what is the status of uh, our products, say VNEX or other products that we make under that uh, brand? The experience of those products for the Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana, are those products been accepted there? Any models are been uh, approved in that area, sir? Absolutely. So there is actually a GHTC, the Global House Technology Competition that happened uh, last year. And uh, we are happy to say that our technology has been selected uh, for this team. So basically, you have to be a part of the approved uh, technology that uh, the government uh, has in order to supply to these projects. And uh, I'm happy to state that our product is, uh, you know, specified, our technology is specified and acknowledged in the various government departments. So you call it uh, Avas Yojana or the other urban um, the urban schemes that the government is talking about, we will have a, a good uh, opportunity to be part of the project. In fact, even the new construction of the parliament that's happening, we are also supplying a few quantity to that building as well. So quite um, um, to give you a realistic picture, I think even the technology uh, adoption is happening at a much faster rate. Um, the efforts are paying off now and we are seeing a positive way in terms of the product being used. So, yeah. Have we started to get orders under this, sir? Under the new approval? Yes, yes. We, we have been supplying, actually. In fact, the last couple of years, we have been one of the major suppliers for the Swatch Bharat toilet schemes. Uh, if you take a look at uh, the women toilets that they were talking about, we actually supplied quite a good tonnage in that segment as well. Uh, you talk about rural housing, you talk about Anganwadi schemes. We have supplied uh, quite a good amount of uh, tonnage in that market. Finally, on the answer, uh, yeah. so what is the share of uh, recycled uh, uh, share of recycled in the overall yarn that we sell, sir? Yeah, so right now we'll be about 10 to 15 percent of of our total sales uh, of re recycled. Okay, and is this to uh, dealers or do we have OEM tires also? Oh, yes, we have OEM types. We actually supply uh, directly to OEMs, uh, which they're after going to uh, think. We, or we are, so just to give you an idea, uh, we are supplying to um, some good brands like Marks and Spencer's who are active in taking uh, sustainable yarn. And our other clients uh, are like Raymond's, Bonia, CRM. Uh, these are the other clients of ours who are actively taking uh, products from us. Yeah. So sustainable yarn is expected to grow in a big way uh, globally, sir. So are you seeing to add more capex in this area, sir? Yeah, so so we've actually been investing in trying to see how best we can get output from our existing facilities. And this is what we've reached in terms of output. If the demand goes up, we'll be very uh, happy to switch over and keeping the price and PPS in mind. Um, we, we are geared up for taking up larger loads in terms of sustainability that, that we see a good uh, potential there and if we need to change or gear up for that we can we are, we are in a good situation for that and the product uh, the current product quality or the products that we make sir, is uh, is there scope for there uh, is the demand going to come in that segment or we have to upgrade on technology sir? No, I think um, the investments that we've been doing and the R&D that we've been doing to develop these fibers, uh, that, that uh, I'm not seeing major uh, investment in that front. We, in fact, we've been applying some uh, good uh, tools with existing facilities to give up to that. But if anything comes up, uh, I think we'll be uh, looking at that. Right now, nothing is on cards. We can actually take care of the uh, upgrade or uh, change in uh, you know from regular fiber to sustainable etc with our existing facilities itself
And uh, one question to Safi sir. what is the gross debt uh, currently? Gross debt is about 167 crores. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir, and all the best. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We have next question from the line of Nimish Desai from Kitara Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah. Uh, congratulations on a good set of numbers. Uh, I wanted to ask uh, what are the utilization levels we have reached now in uh, asbestos and boards and panels? Uh, have we uh, reached our pre COVID levels, uh, sir? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, in 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 terms of uh, all our businesses, uh, except for Sola, which is still yet to, uh, it's a newcomer in the in the lot. I think uh, as this has uh, reached back to a pre-COVID level, we are we are around 85% of from capacity utilization. Both, of course, we are we are even better than pre-COVID levels. Uh, we are doing around 90 plus. Uh, in terms of our capacity utilization. In fact, uh, we are eagerly waiting for the new plant to um, start contributing as soon as possible in terms of the market uh, spread that we are looking at. And and textiles has come back to pre-COVID levels as well. Right now, uh, even though we had a break of almost about six months due to market constraints, now I think going forward, we should see that uh, operate in full swing as well. Okay, so uh, what, uh, I'm just going through the margins. Now you mentioned that your VNext has uh, this quarter has reached 15% margin, and your overall company level margin is also 15%. So your uh, even in your asbestos, you are uh, getting those 15% margins, I believe. Yeah. So earlier, actually, if you noticed earlier, VNext was not contributing much to the margin because it was under the development phase. We were doing a lot of market development and product was taking time to you know get accepted in the market i think over 10 years we've done a lot of hard work in terms of getting this market reach or spread so that contribution is now seen very uh, clearly i think the numbers um, of what you can see so we will be as, as a company going forward i mean if the pulp prices and uh, other raw material prices remain more or less steady it's not having abnormal increases we will be looking at a positive of 15 percent uh, in terms of overall company yeah because your q1 was 20 q2 18 and this q3 15 so what is the trend you look uh, for coming years uh, is it the 15 to 18 or uh, 18 plus range yeah like like, like i said um, i mean uh, difficult to give a long whole year thing but definitely 15 plus uh, maybe anywhere between 15 to 18 percent is what we'll be looking at to achieve Excellent. And sir, now uh, you, your non-asbestos roof is, uh, your volumes are increasing. So would you be able to share any volume numbers in that? So so in terms of overall, uh, I can tell you in terms of overall uh, turnover point of view. Uh, turnover point of view will be anywhere between now getting close to 40-45% uh, in terms of overall share. Uh, of uh, non asbestos to asbestos. And in terms of uh, export market, we are suddenly seeing a good interest in non asbestos roofing market. So, uh, we've, we've uh, done some very basic amount of export uh, to test the market, and we've got very positive feedback from that. So, we are looking at uh, trying to explore some amount of export roofing sheets of non asbestos as well. That should be an additional. So, sir, uh, what do you see this uh, 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 percentage share of non asbestos going forward, uh, FI22 or maybe 23? So, definitely with the new plant, uh, new plant coming up, we'll be having uh, a more about, I think, an increase of about 70 plus crores from the non asbestos division. The whole goal is to increase the non asbestos uh, contribution as an overall company. So, that's the direction we are going in. Um, I, I think I think in the, in the next year definitely we'll be having ad additional 70 crores of um, non asbestos revenue coming. So that that's the uh, direction we are. So sir, we are using same boards and panels facility or asbestos facility? Uh, we are using asbestos facility and and the non asbestos facility. So it depends on the markets that we are looking. 
So if you look at uh, um, some markets where they are, they are okay with having the products made in the same facility, we, we supply from that uh, plant. But some plants, uh, some customers are very particular about not having, you know, asbestos uh, plants make non-asbestos products. So we do take up specially. Uh, all our VNEX uh, plants are actually greenfield projects. They have nothing to do with uh, asbestos to begin with. So I'd just like to mention that. Right. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to participants to ask a question, please press star 1. We have next question from the line of Subham Agarwal from Equitas India. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, first of all, congratulate the entire team of Vishaka for posting such a uh, good number. Uh, sir, my first question was regarding the building product division. So we posted revenue of 236 uh, crores. Can you give us the split between V, Next and Cement as well, as investors in this division for the quarter? Um, About uh, 60 to 80 crores should be um, the V next business out of this. I so think, Mr. Sheffi, am I right? I, I think it could be close to that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. 60 crores, maybe roughly 60 to your. Sir, uh, and uh, given then, uh, given uh, that we are entering into uh, the season of uh, asbestos, so are we expecting or have taken any price hike in Q4? right now so so i think the general trend what you, we've been observing over the years of course i'm sure you are also observing the off seasons are the q2 and q3 for an industry like us so going forward definitely we will be seeing a, a, a price improvement for sure not and not the stages of q3 and q2 because q3 q2 have low demand um going forward i think there should be a marginal increase i i, I cannot say that it will be um, you know, a certain target. We don't have a target as such, obviously. But there, there is. I can't uh, uh, see any reason for the price not to go up, given the demand conditions, which are quite positive. Fair enough, sir. And in your opening remark, you mentioned that working capital days has significantly reduced from 130 days to 81 days, which also implies that inventory level uh, currently must be at a uh, lower end. And given that uh, season is starting, do you see any constraint or uh, whether our volumes will be similar to March 19 level? Yeah, absolutely. Actually, in, in fact, we want to do more than March 19 level because March 19 we got, uh, uh, you know, a, a good boost from the market. Uh, we are trying our best to um, maximize our outputs. I think all our production units. Uh, have been, uh, I think, upgraded to the latest facilities. So we should not be having a problem in terms of not meeting the demand. Um, all our facilities are, are running efficiently and uh, are giving us the best output that we can. So we, we should not see any issue of uh, uh, non-availability or shortage of material for the upcoming. Cut me Okay. And uh, so when it comes to the new plant of the board, uh, the 50,000 ton plant, which is expected to start in October this year, what is the revenue potential from that specific plant? So um, about uh, 50,000 50, should give us about uh, 65 to 70 crores of revenue to, to begin with. But okay. if we add different uh, product mixes, which we normally do, like uh, premium products or designer products or our, uh, painted products, the revenue will go up because the pricing structure for each of the variant is different. So this is the okay in terms of turnover. And lastly, on the expansion of panel, uh, so uh, what is the revenue potential there? And uh, is this the extension to the normal V-boat plant? Or how does it work, if you can elaborate on that? Absolutely. So panels right now, uh, I'm actually, uh, I think I missed updating all of you. Thank you for pointing that out. I think the judger uh, expansion that we've done, I, I'm happy to share that we've, uh, we've touched, you know, full capacity in, in terms of um, sales. 
we are almost about 85 to 90 percent in in that as well in terms of uh, product supply and capacity utilization nepal has been a very good market for us and that was the strategic move of putting a panel plant uh, there and in any any of our facilities if you see uh, panels are made with vnex boards so it's uh, it's like a forward integration uh, as i was saying earlier so any v board plant that we, panel plant that we plan will be the best suited with uh, the existing vnex uh, production going on so so likewise that's how we planned in udmal pet as well keeping the fate and uh, the market in mind and uh, about the point of view uh, i think uh, mr shafi can you share what is the turnover that we are getting from uh, individually i think it will be difficult to give you split right now but the turnover from panel uh, uh, around uh, 50 to 16 crores per annum yeah so it's, it's the major focus will be to spread the boards and the v the v panels would be as, as a value added uh, product that we are looking at yeah sir so how does the margin trend for a panel division compared to v board uh, given that you have uh, given a 15 to 18% margin for v board i assume that panel would be a forward integration so margin would be higher actually forward integration i think it uh, need not necessarily mean a product upgrade it, it it's like a value addition in terms of a finished product the margins will be in the same uh, bracket I, i they will not be in a higher bracket because in terms of actual work uh, in terms of the actual value add you are giving a finished cement block uh, substitute so the com competition again is with a very low range five uh, mark so the margins will be the same as would they, they would not be higher than uh okay sir that's it from my side and thank you again thank you thank you thank you sir we have next question from the line of ajay kapadia from shri ram investment please go ahead so i missed out on the opening remarks so what was the volume growth for investors in the uh, third quarter sorry i am unable to hear you uh, uh, i can't hear you hello sir i missed out the opening remarks what was the volume growth in the investor segment for the third quarter I think overall as as uh, the as a company we grew by 16% in in revenues as this well will be about 10% and uh, going forward in q4 also we are looking at uh, uh, having a reasonable uh, growth uh, about around 10% yeah i assume uh, being the fourth quarter a uh, you know stronger quarter so we will surely have more than uh, this number the volume growth in investors yeah yeah the effort is that uh, we are seeing a positive trend i, I definitely like to uh, look at that and uh, achieve that too. yeah and what was the uh, rose and return on equity for uh, the current quarter um I'll ask uh, ROC is about 22% percent. ROC is uh, 22% for this quarter and uh, equity return on equity that was around return on equity is around 15% so sir are these numbers going to be stable going forward no, it will be sure that the equity is not going up the reserves will be there and the profitability is also there no so our yeah. uh, roc so is not changing much, much uh, because based on that so our uh, uh, yeah, roc return should be more more than this one more uh, than this one yeah so going forward also we will be able to maintain this or it would be higher yeah, yeah, than this it will be maintained or if it's not so hmm. okay and uh, in the fourth quarter uh, uh, in the month of january uh, haven't we already taken a price rise uh, we uh, we are seeing a positive trend and we are not uh, we are getting a uh, price increase based on demand in few markets but uh, i think the full full fledged will be known and this month onwards in terms of the actual market uh, spread yeah okay okay thank you so much thank you thank you thank you, thank you so we have next question from the line of webhub bajatia from hni investment please go ahead 
Hi, sir. Thanks for uh, providing the opportunity. Uh, so, uh, you know, we have seen significant price increases uh, in our asbestos business. Uh, uh, and going forward, also you indicated that there will be some uh, some price increases. So, after the increase that we are forcing uh, uh, in the current quarter, uh, how, how, what would be the different uh, differential between steel and asbestos roofing? If you can uh, just highlight the same. So I think a very interesting question, uh, first of all. Uh, the steel uh, that we see is having a very, uh, you know, increased uh, market value today because of the global rates that we are looking at. The global impacts are having a much higher um, yeah. effect on it. Uh, but if you really see in the rural part of the market the, where we are concentrating on, uh, rural rural retail is concentrated with asbestos products and not metal steel, simply because of the utility point of view. And uh, post-COVID, we are seeing that many people in the rural uh, and even in the urban are picking up, uh, you know, they're doing some small construction work, they're preparing their farm areas, they're investing spaces in, in that area. And most of the product usage would be of asbestos compared to metal sheets simply because of the utility. Uh, that That is one point of uh, a that I want to share. And the second, regarding the pricing, there always has to be a differential pricing of at least, uh, you know, 10% is what we've observed to have a healthy competition in terms of not having the product shift so earlier, if you noticed about three to four years when the gap was hardly 4% uh, compared to metal sheets, mo most of the asbestos customers wanted to try out metal sheets simply because mm. of the, uh, you know, uh, marginal increase in cost is what they thought at that time. Uh, but over the usage, I think utility speaks for itself. Uh, the advantages that the cement roofing has compared to metal, especially in the rural side, with the heat transfer, heat effects, and the rain sound effects that they have with the metal sheet, uh, people are coming back to uh, the cement roofing sheet. So I think a healthy okay. difference of around 10% would, would make sure that uh, you know our, our industry also has a good share in the market in terms of pricing and volume. And volume. Yeah, so 10% is basically I think the asbestos should be cheaper by 10%. That's what Absolutely. you meant to say? Yeah. So that's the uh, uh, so now that could be the, you know the pricing on our end, but is is there not differential in terms of the cost to consumers because of the uh, transport? Uh, I, I'm just guessing that the metal roofing might be easier to transport to the customer side, while the asbestos might be a little expensive to transport to the customer side from mm -hmm. the uh, from the retailer's end. So in terms of cost to customer, uh, including everything. Uh, is, is, should not that that is the point that we should look at in terms of the dif pricing differential? No, all I, I, what I've mentioned is uh, taking inclusive of the freight as well. Mm -hmm. So generally, it's freight is taken care of by the. Uh, is it included in our prices? I think it's no. not included. Huh. It, I'll, I'll just take a minute to explain. So the concept of saying that um, metal sheets are lighter so it's easier to transport is one thing. But if you take a look at the the, the standard players, right, the branded players, uh, mm. and to match with the retail outlets that we have and they have, uh, it's not uh, that the freight would come down. In fact, it would be a higher freight for the uh, metal sheet to, to deliver to their retail outlets, right? Because the material is of lesser weight compared to the volume that they transfer. That's that's mm. that's point number one. Point number two, uh, in terms of the asbestos freight that you take a look, the net difference. What I mean to say is taking freight into consideration and the, the net cost that the consumer gets should be ten percent differential. Then it makes mm. sense in terms of the. Thing. But uh, what point you are raising about uh, metal sheets having lesser freight? is from the dealer outlet to the uh, end consumer's house or, or place of use. But the actual okay. freight cycle from the dispatch to the dealer outlet would be more or less, uh, you know, in the same bracket as what we are observing. Mm -hmm. Right. 
so you know that uh, uh, sorry just just the last point on this thing uh, so you know we our product as bespoke roofing it definitely have higher utility as compared to the metal roofing for sure right uh, so the value in terms of value delivered to the customer it is higher then the steel roofing then why there is a need to maintain a discount to the steel roofing uh, generally you will assume that the product which is delivering higher value should have some kind of a premium but in our case yeah. it is opposite so just wanted to understand why there is a need to have such a discount so so i actually i i am of the similar opinion to be honest with you but uh, market perceptions are different uh, like you mentioned sometime back in terms of Uh, you know, metal sheets. Metal sheets having a new color or a glossy finish that people can take, or the fabricators' work is much easier with the metal sheet compared to asbestos sheet. So it's different perspectives in terms of market pull, and uh, that's the reason why asbestos is getting back its uh, you know uh, demand that we've seen, which was uh, tough from metal sheets, where people are noticing that. yes those are the differences that we have in utility and for rural especially the rural retail market asbestos is coming back so i i think that's the reason we are also getting a good pricing uh, uh, fee try a pricing pull from the market in terms of our outlook but i don't see that uh, because of uh, the pricing uh, because of the utility that we should be on a similar match because in, still in the customers mind that metal sheet is something new metal sheet it's 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 like the grass is greener for now because the majority of the market is familiar with our products hey, so i hope hey. that answers your question it, it's not uh, very direct in terms of saying that yes i'm i'm giving a better utility um, so i'm getting a better price at the moment but but we we would like that to happen eventually yes right got it and this 10% number that you told me this is the cost to dealer right 10% differential is you you meant to say cost differential in terms of cost to dealer dealer yes yeah. cost cost to consumer if i'm buying a metal sheet yeah yeah if i'm buying a metal sheet as a consumer there hmm. is a 10% difference okay okay got it thank you that's it for my thanks thank you thank you Thank you. We have next question from the line of Nimish Desai from Kitara Capital. Please go ahead. So I have a couple of follow-up questions. One yeah. I want to understand is that uh, because of this COVID last year, a lot of building product materials not in our category, so they have moved to negative working capital or a very low working capital model, and dealers have also happily accepted that. So are we able to see that kind of trend in our category? um i'm i'm not sure uh, which category you are referring to uh, but uh, I, i mean i definitely like to know which category but we are seeing a different trend in terms of uh, the general demand and the stocking uh, correlation we are not uh, seeing the negative working capital situation as of now uh, not right now yeah. okay and my second uh, question is uh, regarding your uh, uh, debt see uh, we are the way you have uh, guided that we will be near anywhere near 18% margin and hence we will have a very healthy cash position in next uh, two years or maybe three years which will actually you will have a good problem to solve is uh, more cash in hand so are we have any do we have any plans for for the capex or when you'll have such kind of problem yeah so i i think um, uh, actually we had a very good discussion on this uh, point internally as a team as well and we are seeing a very uh, i mean we are quite bullish on the whole vnex uh, business uh, um just to give you some idea in terms of the overall out outlay or output of of the product uh, almost 10 million square feet of product is being deployed month on month now if this can can be built on further in terms of the overall building material supply uh, in terms of the entire you know dry be it dry wall partitions or false ceilings or, or new constructions coming up so the government of india is talking about bringing in fda fdi and and new companies uh, to put up their manufacturing facilities in india what we are seeing is a huge uh, you know uh, great potential for products like us in terms of entering the commercial spaces in terms of entering the I think entering is the wrong word, but increase in use 
uh, in the commercial space and the residential. So Renext is one business I think we would like to definitely concentrate more and invest more in. Uh, having said that, I think um, the fourth plan, once the fourth plan comes up, we are looking at other avenues to uh, to spread. So so the effect would be to concentrate and increase our investment in the Renext business. Uh, that That's the short term goal for now. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have next question from the line of Subham Agarwal from Equitas India. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Good morning. This is Jitika Gupta. Um, yeah. So, congratulations on a fantastic set of numbers. I wanted to know how did the industry for the asbestos division grow in this quarter? So, I think there's been an overall demand increase for all of all the players. Okay. It's been more of um, I think it's it's been more the decision of. Do you want to go after uh, volumes or do you want to go after price? I think every, everybody, every industry is having such a competition. Uh, mm -hmm. I think um, I think I, most of the competitors also have done reasonably well in terms of um, you know the market pull. Right. Uh, but the internal uh, company uh, operations, the decisions that I think e each of us have to our individual, uh, those are the, uh, the I think differences that you can see in the numbers. Uh, like I've been mentioning the last couple of calls, we have been very uh, uh, working very hard in terms of getting efficient in terms of our operations, keeping our operational expenses low. Uh, I think uh, that is really helping us coupled with a good market situation. Right. So what would be the industry volume growth in this quarter? Uh, I think uh, quarter-wise, I think industry growth may be around 5 plus, around 5. That okay. should be the overall thing. We have done about 10. And and going forward also, I think as an industry, there will be a growth, uh, provided we do the right thing and spreading in the rural retail market. Um, like I've been saying, the strength of our product and the utility is more direct and more seen in the rural market, in the residential market. Um, unlike the commercial projects where they prefer metal sheets or metal roofing. So, so we need to be smart about where we need to push our products in terms of utility and, and that's the benefit that each of us have to get. Right. Also in the last call we did mention that our prices were, we were, our realizations for the asbestos division uh, were a little lower, were going to be a little lower in Q3 versus Q2. I'm sorry, I lost you. Can you please repeat? Uh, I, I didn't hear yeah, yeah, yeah. what. So in the last quarter call, we did mention that our realizations in the asbestos division were going to be lower in Q3 versus Q2. So if you could give us the realization numbers for asbestos. I, I think that will be difficult to, to, to share on this call. We'll, we'll be happy to give it to you offline. But okay. uh, in the general trend, like, like I think everybody is aware, the Q2, Q3 normally have uh, lower price trends compared to the Q1 and the Q4. So okay. we are looking forward to that, yeah. Also, we did mention that the price differential with steel last quarter was 15 to 20% versus 10% yeah. this quarter. Yeah. So what so, would be the yeah. reason for that? So actually, steel has been uh, uh, quite sporadic in the middle. There was, there was a change of up and down. But mm -hmm. uh, this is what the realistic numbers is what it's looking at. And if the steel guys take a higher jump in the, in, in the coming months, then we'll see a higher uh, difference. Of okay. Um, my next question is pertaining to raw material cost pressures. Are we seeing raw material cost pressures in either the asbestos division and uh, the boards division? So asbestos not yet because uh, I, I think the trend is uh, still comparable with the previous years. Okay. So we, what, we may what see about a, pulp prices? Yeah, yeah, I'm just answering that. In the pulp side, we may see a slight uplift because there's a lot of demand coming in from China for the packaging uh, industry again. Yes. And uh, that we have to watch out for in terms of that. The trend seems to be that there will be a slight increase uh, going forward for sure. Okay, and what about fiber prices? Um, fiber prices are, uh, are like that fluctuate. You mean to say the uh, textiles, right? No, no, no. I meant to say for asbestos. 
as well, yeah, I, I like I've answered. Um, there's not, there's no trend per se. I think it should be in the similar trend with a marginal increase uh, year on year what they have. But for now, it, it seems like the industry is, is done similar to last year because of post COVID. So there should be a similar rate of uh, prices from the supplies, which is what we are expecting. Okay, and my next question is pertaining to the budget. Now, um, with the duties on steel coming down in the budget, do we see imports of steel increasing and thereby um, the growth for our industry reducing a little bit? Like competing product coming in? Yeah, so I think in terms of uh, product, again, I, I'd like to stress on the markets that we concentrate on. So. If I if I come to you and say that I'm not able to sell roofing sheets in the commercial segment, uh, that's a known thing. Uh, I my product is not moving there, so I need to concentrate on the rural retail, where the metal sheet uh, advantage is no longer seen by the consumer. So these kind of decisions will will be key, I think, going forward. Um, and uh, apart from that, I think the overall housing scheme projects that the government is launching. I think AC sheets should be a good uh, uh, uplift in that, in terms of the Swachh Bharat or the urban Swachh Bharat. Either of the schemes, I think uh, we'll have a good chance of spreading our products there. Okay, and exports, you did mention that Nepal is a good um, jurisdiction for exports. Which other countries are we exporting to? So, so to share about VNEX, we're almost selling to about 36 to 38 countries right now. Mm -hmm. um, we are selling to Maldives, we are selling in Seychelles, we are selling to African countries, we are selling to South Africa, Kenya, Botswana, and uh, we also have a good uplift uh, of products from the UK. There's a consistent uh, uh, you know, supply going on to the UK. So the effort is to see where are the pockets that we can tap, where the preference from China may be slightly changing in terms of the international market. We are targeting those countries, and uh, it seems to be a positive uh, outcome in, in those areas. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I guess I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As there are no further questions from the participants, I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Over to you. Yeah, so thank you, everybody. I think um, uh, uh, thank you for attending the call, and it was a great uh, interaction for us and the team. We look forward to interacting with you all uh, further. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies thank and you. gentlemen, thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of ICICI Securities, that concludes this conference call. Thank you for joining with us, and you may now disconnect your lines.